I've never made a wine rack before. So when my friend asked if I could make him a wine rack, I was excited to get started. We discussed a few different designs and agreed on a general idea. The wine rack will consist of 17 pieces, six cross members, three notch for the front end of the bottle, three notch for the back end of the bottle, four legs with three notches in each leg to hold the three cross members in the front and the three cross members in the back. You'll have four long trim pieces with like a male end on them and then four short trim pieces with like a female end for that male end to fit in. And then a top. Now let's go build this thing. After designing the wine rack, I organize a cut list and then get it started on the cross cut sled. Some people might find it easier to use their miter saw. I just don't seem to be able to dial in my miter saw to cut a, a perfect 90, despite the fact that it's a $500 Makita. So until I get the opportunity to build an accurate fence system for my miter saw, I'm just going to stick with the cross cut sled. I actually had to do a lot of these cross cuts twice because the initial board I was going to use was just too twisted. And since I don't have a planer or a jointer yet, I just headed back to the lumber rack, found a board that was easier to work with and started over. Once I completed my cross cut list, I threw the fence back on the table and I ripped everything down to width. One of the most common mistakes I make at this part of my projects is moving my table saw fence before finishing all the pieces I needed cut at that width. It's just not quite as accurate to come back and try to match it up and without fail I made that mistake twice during this part. With all of my pieces cut and ripped to size, I took my marking gauge, set it to the thickness of the board, and marked out all the notches for my male and female trim pieces. I was able to do all of this with one setting on the marking gauge. Now that my pieces were marked out, I headed back to the crosscut sled, set the blade to height, and proceeded to remove material. To do this, I run passes every other blade width down the notch, Use my hand to break out the extra pieces, bring the board back onto the center of the sled, and then use the center of the blade to clean up that extra material. For the female trim pieces, I used the same technique, except I stood them up vertically. I also had to make my passes closer together because the excess is more difficult to break out on the end grain. After finishing gluing up the top and bottom trim pieces, I moved on to the cross members where the wine bottles would sit. To make the cross members, I used a hole saw to drill holes down the center of these boards. For the front cross members where the neck of the bottle would sit, I used a one and a half inch hole saw. For the back cross members where the bottom of the bottle would sit, I used a two and an eighth inch hole saw. Once I was finished drilling all the holes, I took the boards and ripped them straight down the center. This allowed me to make two cross members with each board. After ripping the cross members in half, I took the cross members for the back end of the wine rack over to the bandsaw to expand the grooves for the wide end of the bottle. Once I finished up on the bandsaw, I clamped all three of those pieces together and took them over to the belt sander to clean up the rounded edges. It was at this stage of the build that I had realized I made a pretty big mistake. I spaced out the grooves on the cross members too wide. This means that the back end of the bottles would not have space to sit because they would be running into the legs. I was pretty disappointed at this point because I thought I was going to have to remake all the cross members, 
However, later in the day, I realized that if I ripped the legs thinner, it would create the space that the bottles needed. Once I finished correcting that mistake, I used the crosscut sled to notch out the spaces for the cross members in the legs. Let's dry fit the wine rack and see how it looks. After dry fitting the wine rack, I marked out where I would need to router and not router all of the pieces. Then I moved on to the shittiest part of any project, sanding. Once I was done sanding, I assembled the wine rack. With assembly of the frame done, it's time to cut the top to size. I decided to use a Craig jig to pilot some holes in the top of the legs that would be used to connect the top to the frame. Well, that with the assistance of some glue. Generally speaking, I prefer natural oil finishes over stains and polyurethanes, but since the wine rack needed to match my friend's furniture, I was okay with it. For me, carpentry is more than just a hobby. It's an outlet for learning, creating, and accomplishing goals. The end result of that is satisfaction and happiness. The same could be said for all of my passions. So get out there and find your passion. If you took the time out of your day to watch this video, thank you so much. And if you enjoyed the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel.